as you can see, I'm on with the uh, the MGB. Um, I've taken the engine out to uh, check the clutch. The um, cars that I was working on previous episode, the two uh, TR6s, um, the red one's gone and the green one's waiting to go tomorrow. Um, so I cracked on with this one. The problem was the clutch wasn't disengaging. Even though it was brand new and somebody just put it in, uh, the clutch wasn't disengaging. On one of the uh, videos that I did with the TR6s, if you've been looking at them, uh, to line up the uh, clutch assembly and put the transmission inside the TR6, I made a tool, or I, I make a tool, I sell. I explained in the video how you have to not let the transmission hang on the back of the uh, uh, engine and then go away and leave it and then come back with the transmission halfway in. You have to put it in, keep it lined up and do it all the time. What the problem was with this, I think, is the guy's done it without misaligning the transmission, the transmission was in the car, the guy misaligned the engine and at one point I think he left the engine hanging on uh, the gearbox with the primary shaft inside the uh, clutch assembly, the release assembly, pushing on the uh, release plate here that the release bearing goes onto and this is supposed to be on the pressure plate, on the pressure plate here. And obviously it's come off and I took it all apart this was hanging off and just dangling around on the primary shaft and the bit inside come off altogether and that, that was inside against the uh, center plate so this had been a bit of a problem uh, and I think that's what did it the guy when he was putting it in misaligned it and went and had a cup of tea I got pissed off because it wouldn't go in uh, started getting a bit rough with it and I think he damaged this while he was putting it in because to be honest, I've seen these wear out, but I've never seen them break off before. Um, so that's what I'm in the process of doing. I'm going to put a new clutch in it and throw it back in the car. And uh, that should uh, alleviate the problem. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I have the engine back in the car and I've been for a drive in it. Um, the clutch works okay now. Um, unfortunately, there was a huge vibration off the uh, drive shaft. When I looked at the drive shaft, the uh, front flange onto the transmission only had two bolts in it. Plus the fact uh, the U-joints were worn, they weren't falling off, but they were certainly worn. And the drive shaft itself was out of sync. Um, whoever put the uh, the end piece on the drive shaft put it in the wrong place. So the, the two U-joints were out of phase, which is also going to cause a bit of a problem. So over on the bench here, I've got some of the parts that I had to replace when I put the clutch in. So this is a clutch that I replaced off the MGB. I showed you before when the um, thing was in pieces when it came off. And I replaced the release bearing and I replaced the center plate. One of the problems that I found was on the flywheel, when I took out the bolts holding the pressure plate onto the flywheel, a helicoil came out of one of the, uh, the bolt holes. I couldn't, I couldn't redo it again, it was wrecked. So I had to, I, as it happened, I had another flywheel, so I used that. I also replaced the oil seal on the back of the main, uh, on the main bearing on the uh, engine because all, all the inside of the bell I was in, all the back of the uh, flywheel, everything was, was wet through with oil and grungy stuff. So I replaced the oil seal on the back of the engine and I replaced the one on the front of the transmission along with the gasket. Um, so I had to do that. Then actually when I got underneath and did the prop shaft, I changed, had to change the back one on the oil seal on the back of the transmission. So basically I changed everything on the tranny. It was uh, leaking oil everywhere and I've checked the um, uh, the um, air vent on top of the transmission make sure it isn't, isn't blocked because if that's blocked it'll cause pressure push oil out. So anyway I've checked that. So what I'm left with now is to do the, um, the back brakes which uh, have been collecting oil in the drums for quite a while as you'll see. Now, now on the brakes so far, what I've done, I've put new rotors on and I've uh, repacked the uh, bearings with grease and I've put a new caliper on. One of the calipers on the other side was C-solid. Um, one of the rotors was 25 thou under, undersize, and the other one only had 25 thou left on it. So I changed both rotors and both calipers. So now I'm going to go to the, uh, the back and uh, look at the uh, rear end where I think most of the trouble is.
So now with the back brakes, I've got a bit more of a problem um, or a bit more to do. <clears throat> it's got um, brake fluid going into the drum and it's also got a bit of the oil coming out of the axle. And when I take this off, you can see the state that it's in. It's completely covered in stuff. Uh, it's got oil and it's got brake fluid on it as well. You can smell it. Um, I suppose if I had an apprentice, I'd get him to taste it, then I could know what it was. But either way, it's pretty grabby. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strip it and clean it up a bit and then we'll come back to it and I'll show you what I've done. You can see I've cleaned everything off. I've checked the adjuster on the back and that's free in the back. Um, I took the little wedges out and cleaned them up. The wheel cylinder I'm replacing anyway. Um, but at the moment what I want to do is take off the hub and show you how to take and change the oil seal. So first of all what we've got to do is take the hub off. Now you can see the oil seal here, it's got a lot of crap under it and it's been leaking down the back. Now rather than gouge this out or try and pull this out, I undo the four bolts I'm going to take the plate off. I'm going to change the wheel cylinder anyway, uh, I need to show how to use a tool to put it back on. But I'm going to take the plate off and it's a lot easier for me because also uh, it's easier to change the oil seal. I can clean it up on the back and clean the back of the plate as well. And there's also a joint where sometimes it leaks. There's a joint behind the oil seal that's liable to leak. So that's what I can cover if I take it off. So I take the four bolts off. If you want, you can try with a screwdriver to gouge it out, but personally, I think it's better if you take it off. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let me just find my gear here. That's the wrong one. Okay, that's all my bolts out. So now when I take this off now, this will just come straight off and you can see the oil seal behind here. It's when I feel it, it's pretty soft, but it's leaking. Uh, you can see it's been the plate is a surface fit on here. Again, so it's a machine fit. There's no gasket. It's just a straight fit on it. But you can see also how filthy the back of the, uh, the plate is. So I'm going to take this and clean it and then we'll go to the bench and I'll change the wheel cylinder and show you the tool that I used to put the clip on and, uh, and then we'll prep all this to go back on. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put my plate back on. Um, I've got my wheel cylinder on it and everything ready to go. So I'm just going to put a bit of Hylomar on the back of the joint here. This is a machine joint here and it fits on the outside of the bearing slots in here and it's not a pressure oil on it the, the oil isn't under pressure that's on this joint it's just a splash coming through the bearing and it's got to get through the bearing as well so I'm going to put a little bit of Hylomar on here and Hylomar is a product that's been around for quite a long time it's specifically for actually putting on machine faces Now put the brake plate back on, make sure you get it the right way up. Now I have the plate on. Um, I've got some grease on the back where I need it all to be all ready. So I'm just going to put the shoes on. So I'm going to show you how to put the shoes on because uh, it can be quite difficult. They're a bit awkward. So I'll just show you the way I do it. And then, you know, if you find that easy, that's good. Um, First of all, we, we start off with the shoes. The shoes have got a leading edge on the front and the leading edge has to go towards the direction of the wheel when it's coming and the same when it's on the bottom here. I think I explained this on one of the other oil seal ones I did for the uh, banjo axle. It's got to go around and face the wheel. This is a leading edge, it's quite important. Um, first of all, there's a hole in the bottom. This is the one with a hook on. We put that through there. And then I put it on the wheel cylinder 
make sure you're on the wheels under. Hook it on the thing here, on the handbrake mechanism, and then you can put this pin on through the back. And I just then use this to hold the wheel steady, uh, hold the uh, the brake shoe steady. Now I've got one firm. I take my top spring, and the top spring is a right and the wrong way around too. We want it up this way, so the spring's above the the bar, not that way. We want it this way, so you stick it up and hook it in here. Hook it in the slot that's on the top of there. And we get the other brakes, you remember, leading edge on the bottom there. Um, we hook it into our bit of uh, our spring. It goes through the slotted hole there, and the the this part for the um, handbrake mechanism goes through this section. So we just put it in there, and we get all of it. Put it in there, like that. And then making sure our hook is still in here, we've got to hook it around the big hole. So we just move it forward a bit. Just get it on there. And then we pull it back and hook it on there. Now the last spring we got to put on is the one for the handbrake mechanism. And of course the retainer on here. So we'll do the retainer first. You can get a special tool for this, but I like doing it with pliers so, so I can see what I'm doing. Now the last thing to go on is going to be our spring for the uh, handbrake. So I clip it onto this again and it goes on the top. We get a pair of needle nose pliers and what I do instead I don't try and put the whole thing in I just try and get the hook to go in a hole and then it stays in place for it I just do it like that and then I just push it in the hole with my pliers and we're good to go so I'm going to put the hub on now and everything and uh, that's it Now one of the things I'm going to do, by the way, on my website is I have a picture of the brake assembly with all the springs on it without the hub on so you can see it. Um, and I put a few other comments about stuff about uh, the rear brakes and assembling them. Anyway, so if you go on my website and you sign up, uh, you get onto another section that's got a whole lot of information and stuff about the videos on it. Now, how do I get in there? Now usually what I'll do, I'll set that and then I'll put my screws in, which I don't have. So I have to go and get two new screws. I'll put the screws in, hold my drum, and I do my adjustment again. And only after I've adjusted the brake and got the wheel adjusted, or the brake drum adjusted, then I connect up the handbrake cable. If the handbrake cable's too tight, I'll let it off. Because what invariably what happens, instead of guys using the adjusters, especially if they're seized up, they adjust it with a handbrake cable. So they're pulling the handbrake on and using that to adjust the back wheels, which is not good because it affects the pedal. That's it really. Um, now there's one more thing that I want to mention, and that's in the back here, it's where the uh, breather is for the axle. On the top of the axle, there's a breather that goes to fresh air, so that when the uh, axles running and the oil is getting splashed around inside the differential when the oil heats up which it will um, it expands 
and obviously it causes pressure inside the axle. To relieve that, there's an air, air vent on top of the axle. If the air vent's bunged up with shit like this one was, it'll blow it out of the seals, which is one of the reasons why the seals leak, apart from the fact they get old. But the oil will be pushed out because of the pressure, because this isn't done. So where it is, is in here. And if you pull the top off, this one I've cleaned already, you pull the top off, and put a thing in the top and one in the side, you'll see the hole in the side, then put the cover back on. So that's the last thing you've got to do. Make sure you check that because it's important. All right, that's about it really. Okay, I'm off for a cup of tea. Well, we've wrapped everything up on the car now. I've done the back brakes and I've put the uh, brake lines on that I had to replace. Um, and I've bled all the brakes, so it's uh, ready to go now. So. This car's leaving. Uh, what I'm going to do now in this episode is I'm going to just show a clip of uh, an MGB that was stripped for painting that's come back. So I'm going to show that clip so you get orientated with the car work that we actually did in the summer. And then we'll come back to the present time when the car actually arrives back for paint. Okay, so that's where we're going to go now. This is a customer's car and um, we've been looking after it for a couple of years, that's when he bought it actually about five years ago. Uh, when he bought it it was in a bit of a scruffy state, um, so what we're in the process of doing now is we're to the painting stage. When we first got the car we had to put new floors in it uh, and some other little bits of welding work, not much. Then we got it through a safety and he drove it for a couple of years. The next thing we did was the interior. On the dashboard we took out all the instruments and the uh, switches and we repainted all the dashboard, fixed the glove box, um, changed some of the instruments, we put on a new crash pad on the front of the dashboard. The um, seats were done already, they were in pretty good condition. Um, we made door panels, put door panels, panels on the back with the piping in, fixed all the door handles and some of the mechanisms uh, and we replaced the carpets. Um, now one of the things I've got on the body is there's a bit of a problem uh, on the front. On the front you can see it's been hit. It seems to have been hit on the bumper and on the front of it it's pushed the grill in. Also around the light and you can see on the side of the fender it's got a bit of a bulge where this has been pushed back. So we're going to have to address that. I don't really want to put a new fender on it because the fender is uh, quite good. Um, we have to check down in the lower quarter, but that's, uh, that'll be later on after we've stripped the car. So the first thing we're going to do is take off all the peripheral stuff. Um, the strips on the side, the windshield wipers and the uh, pieces in here, the intake for the grill, take all the badges off. Uh, we're going to take out the windshield frame and the side uh, windows uh, and strip it all and cut the door handles off, so we're going to have to strip the doors. So um, that's what our first job is. We have all the chrome pieces off the car now. Um, we have all the badges off it, the bumpers off it, lights, the strip around the back. We've stripped all the doors till they're empty. We took off the windshield and uh, we've done all the lights on the front, the grill, everything. So well, now we're on the way to the body shop. I'm just going to put it on the trailer, load it up, and uh, it's out of here. And then when it comes back, hopefully it'll be nice and shiny and all painted. The car's finally come back from the paint shop. Um, I'm really pleased with the paint job actually. I, t I take it to a reputable place. It's some collision in uh, St. Catharines. They do really nice work. It's part of the most expensive part of the restoration, but to me it's part of the, uh, uh, it's most important. If the paint job's shitty, the, the job's shitty, or it looks it. Um, I'm not into this having a scruffy car that's perfectly mechanical and everything's okay. No, I like the car to be nice paint to be finished and the body to be good and straight before I put all my effort in putting it all back together and getting the car running right. Anyway, this is like the third thing on the stage of restoring the car. It's restoring it as he drives it and as I said uh, previously in the video, we've done uh, a lot of the mechanicals, gone through a safety, did a few other things and this was the big lump getting it painted and getting the bits in the body straightened out. They've done a nice job, colour change as you can see. As we go along the side here, you can see all on the bottom, it's been really down. The dog legs were changed. Uh, the rocker panels are okay, actually. Uh, the car is pretty solid from where it came from. Came out in BC, I believe. But anyway, um, here's all the, the car's finished really well. <coughs> when we do, gaps are good. So, 
all I have to do now is um, put it together, um, which is what I'm going to do. I kind of started already because uh, I started on the side windows, on the quarter windows. We've repaired them already. With the quarter lights, what I've done, I've replaced the rubber right in the quarter lights in here. Put new rubbers in here. And we've also put new strips down here, the, uh, the runners for the uh, windows to go in. We've made sure our nuts on the bottom here are okay. These are clear and the tension's good on the spring. Uh, and the unit's pretty clean. Uh, we put a new rubber in the top as well. So uh, I'm going to put these in the car. I've got the seals to go underneath, all the seals in the door. So as we go along, I'll just show you the bits that I've done. Thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel as we appreciate the support and it does encourage us to make more videos.